Okay, this is a RetroPie setup, a standard sort of install with Emulation Station. And I'm doing this one on the um, separate video capture because when you play the games, it'll flip into different video modes quite a lot and it confuse the capture device. So hopefully, this doesn't come out too bad on the um, on the video, and you can see how this looks. So this is a stock install RetroPie. You can change this splash image pretty easily. There's a little GUI. Um, tool to do it, the menu tool with the um, RetroPie setup, and then it kick into Emulation Station. You can change this splash screen as well, but it does mean recompiling some of the elements, and it's a bit of hassle. But to be honest, it, it looks like a really nice splash screen anyway. I'd probably keep that in place. And mine will take quite a while to load because I think during this process, it will load the game list.xml files into memory. They're the files that tell emulation station what games are listed and where the images for them are and um, the metadata like the year it was released the description of the game and everything like that I haven't got loads of systems set up here it's only about four or five but they have got quite a lot of games in each and so each of those game list.xml files are quite big and it probably loads the images that they reference into memory as well maybe so it does take a while but there we go that's booted up uh, selected main to start with and that's based on the es underscore systems.cfg file so whatever you put at the top or higher in that file is what it'll load first I think by default it's alphabetical but I've changed it about a bit so on this setup I've got uh, MAME installed I've got the Neo Geo stuff under um, Pi FBA or Thunderbird Alpha and NES kept the ports the same I've taken the Apple II and the IBM PC one out um, because I don't really use those and all you've got to do to get those out of the list is take the files out which is a start.txt file so if you take those out they don't appear I've got Sega Master System and uh, Genesis which you know Mega Drive for everyone who isn't in North America um, probably need to swap the image there I've done a separate video on the themes and how to grab another image I think these are SVG files so if you put a separate SVG file in that says Mega Drive that would appear and then um, SNESDA, so just thought I'd try these and again the reason I'm doing the video capture like this is because when you fire a game up it'll change the video mode and that can be a bit of hassle if you're not recording the screen like this okay so in MAME uh, I've already configured the buttons if you want to know how MAME is set up or how the metadata is looking here so you've got the images and the, um, the name looks a bit more sensible rather than the ROM name I've done separate videos for that so you can see how I've set this up and scraped the data for um, all the other systems as well because that's a bit different to me. And if I just fire one of these games up, um, let's go for we've got um, Hero Fighters, Airwolf Ice Kid, Aliens, uh, let's just try one of these, Ultra Beast. Okay, so you see a bit of um, the Pi running there and then straight in. There is a bit of a delay before the sound kicks in for some reason um, but it should be okay. Then I've set this up already the keys uh, to have select to add coins. There we go. Um, start button to start. I'm using a USB gamepad that looks like a mm, quite an early arcade game. The sound's not amazing. Okay pretty responsive though, it's easy to play and um, like I said I'm using a USB gamepad as opposed to doing this in a sort of arcade um, arcade stick or oh, something happened there arcade stick um, and it's you know perfectly easy to play, you get enough buttons, typically the arcade would give you three buttons and on the SNES joypad you get the four main ones and then the two side ones so you can usually map to most of those um, I'm pretty bad at this game Okay, there's jump, let's kick, right. Um, again, this is on a TV, it's not a sort of main setup in a cabinet and um, with the arcade joystick connected with iPad buttons and the whole sort of shebang. It's just a quick and easy way of playing arcade games on the TV. And um, just remember what this was like on the Mega Drive compared to the arcade. It's pretty good graphics now on the arcade compared to that Mega Drive port. It's pretty quick um, emulation on the Raspberry Pi, it can handle it pretty well 
I'm not using a shader on this, so there's not anything extra it's got to think about. And this emulator for Pi, um, for the Raspberry Pi, is uh, MAME for all Pi. And there's a particular ROM set that works pretty well with that. And Okay, I don't know how you get the flight thing. Right, I'm going to quit with select and start to go back to the menu. You can set in MAME using the tab button, um, shortcut keys. So you don't have to edit a config file, you can just do that in the interface there and then it takes you back to emulation station. If I press B, you go back to the other systems. I'll go back into MAME, just try another one. Um, press the um, right button at the top, the paddle bar there, and just jump down a few quicker. What else have we got? Um, blah, 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 bubbles, burning fight, I think that's an SNK, Neo Geo game. Uh, Carnival Carrier Airwing, Caveman Ninja, let's give that a go see how that works. Okay, it's just kicking the emulator in. Loads pretty quick. And select to put the credits in. Hopefully, the sound will kick in again. Press start. Okay. Right. Okay, you've got jump, throw axes. Two player on them. Um, main works fine as well, obviously you just need two controllers and uh, the config that you get when you press the tab button will fire those up and you can configure those or you can use a keyboard as well. Graphics pretty good here, again obviously it would be a bit more authentic if uh, there were some scan lines going on but compared to arcade console games the emulation on a, on a main doesn't look too bad and it's upscaled onto a high def TV. Okay, pretty horrific at this. Okay, see what else you've got. Just takes a minute to go back into that emulation station interface. This is emulation station 2 using the RetroPie 2.3, um, which came out in about July 2014, so it's fairly new. Um, what other set of games we've got here? Double Dragon. A couple of thousand in this ROM so this is. Let's play some bizarre Japanese shoot em up, see what this looks like. Hmm, taking a bit longer. It's not liking that, see so if I can quit out of it. Okay, he must have initialized NVR. And it is firing up just upside down. A longer beat sequence than normal. I think there's a setting in maybe the config.txt file to flip a screen, but I don't know why this one's upside down and the other ones are all fine with that. I don't know what's making that move. Okay, quit that. should jump me back into emulation station. Yeah, okay. Right. Um, what else we got? Final play. Final fight. That's great. I'll try that. Beat up sequence. Some of the games, depending on the ROM, I guess, uh, different resolutions, some of them just be a sort of strip almost in the middle. Typically old shoot em ups and other ones like this one's taking the full screen. This is on a 720p HD TV. Put a few credits in with select, press start, and final fight. It does look a bit blown up, a little bit distorted on this screen, but it's not bad at all. Um, you know, if you want more precise emulation, there's different methods to do it rather than a Raspberry Pi trying to output to. Um, this sort of screen, there are plenty of forums on how to get it really accurate, but this is pretty damn good for a project that just takes about an hour or so to get up and running on a Raspberry Pi. Pretty good speed, you can emulate this pretty well, I'm not feeling that much lag to be honest. 
some of the other consoles, particularly ones where you shaded, you can feel it's a bit sluggish. But this is pretty good. There we go. If there's any particular games that you want to see running or emulated, just um, pop a comment below the video and I'll uh, do my best to try that one out. Yeah, so give it another system a quick go rather than main. But you get the idea with main, it's pretty easy to get up and running. Most of the systems are pretty easy to get up and running. The complicated bit tends to be making sure the joypad works, but um, I've got a couple of videos about that so that should help you out. Let's go into Genesis. Um, let's try uh, maybe Sonic, if one knows what that looks like. Sonic Hedgehog. Okay, so this is running a shader, and if I press select, I should see the name of the one I've chosen. That's gone forward one, so back one. Oh, that's not easy to see. Okay, I don't know the default shader I had running. I think it's Phosphor. I think I use Phosphor by default. Um, if I quit this, actually, just go back in. It won't take a sec. There's a few to try out, and you can change them with hotkeys on your joypad quite easily. But some of the shaders do take a bit of processing power, and you can feel it running a bit slower. Okay, so this is booted again, which with whatever, sh whatever shader I was using, which I think was Phosphor, but some of it. It's got a bit overkill with um, scan lines on this. Again, I don't know how accurate it's going to come out in the video, but um, the game itself plays pretty well. It doesn't feel too sluggish, and it's got a better retro feel than leaving it because the consoles particularly when they're upscaled they can look particularly bad um, a bit too distorted and pixelated compared to when you run it on that original CRT but, um, it's a pretty good game even after 20 years or however long it's been 25 years Good thing now about the emulation that they didn't have back with the original kit is that you can there we go and um, save the games now as well so you don't have to try and get to the end of the level before you can um, save anything or some of them don't have save points at all and now you can save whenever you want so that's a definite improvement particularly for these longer games that take ages to get anywhere or particularly hard games we want to keep retrying points. Ok, well that's Sonic, let's uh, give another one a go. Um, Gynig was pretty good on, I think Wings of War was the American name, Gynig on the Japanese one. Uh, let's have a look. G N M G. Ok, no Gynig, maybe Wings of War. Wings of War. Again, uh, this was running the same shader obviously for the Mega Drive that I was running a minute ago. Doesn't seem particularly slow. I have got Mega Drive hooked up to the TV that I could compare the um, emulated version against the original. Um, when I've done that before, it's, it's always looked pretty similar except um, the graphics obviously are a little bit more um, precise with the original kit. But emulation is perfectly payable, and uh, the, the amount of ROMs that you can get, as long as you've um, got the original cartridge, obviously, there's uh, plenty of games to keep you busy on all of the systems as well. Like I say, I've only put four or five systems hooked up at the moment on this RetroPie slash RetroArch installation, but you could um, play plenty of the old things like uh, Amiga, Spectrum, C64, Atari. Uh, it does a lot of emulation. Okay, I think I'm going to quit it there. But like I say, if they've got any questions about emulating consoles on RetroPie or 
uh, Raspberry Pi, then put it down in the comments and I'll um, run another game up. But you get the idea, it's pretty easy to do and quite addictive. <laughs> Here we go. Thanks for watching.